Hey, folks, welcome to Shooting Up North. I'm your host, Lewis Carlin. Thank you so much for joining me today. It has been such a long time since I recorded a podcast here on the Shooting Up North uh, YouTube channel. Um, I think the last one I did might have been November of 2023, where I I interviewed Cyrus and Ryan Davison for All Japan Pro Wrestling. They had the uh, their tag league tournament was about to begin, and I had interviewed them. And that was the last uh, podcast they did. And people have been asking me, Lewis, where have you been? What's going on? Where are you? Um, I've been working for an independent company out here, a professional wrestling company called uh, NCG, Nobles Champion Group Wrestling. I'm uh, deeply involved with them. I'm doing backstage interviews. I'm doing podcasting for them. I'm doing. I'm running the social media. So that's been taking up a lot of my time. So I've been concentrating uh, on helping them grow here in the Windsor, Essex, Ontario area. Uh, there is some competition out here. Not going to name the competition, but um, it's um, we're we're growing and we're going to be doing just fine. We have a huge 2025 coming up, and so that's what I've been doing. Uh, about a month ago, though, I was thinking, you know, I kind of miss jumping on the Shooting Up North YouTube channel and uh, talking to the people out there, talking TNA, Impact Wrestling. So, and I was getting the bug again. It was, it was sitting in me. I was getting the urge. And so, um, here I am. Here I am. Uh, Bound for Glory uh, just took place. I, I First of all, I got to admit, I have to admit that I haven't been following TNA basically at all. I, I, I just, I kind of fell off the TNA wagon. Uh, the TNA wagon. Uh, so I haven't really been watching TNA uh, much. I, I talk to BQ Impact Lounge, and we go back and forth and uh, ask him what's going on, and he tells me what's going on. And uh, he told me it's a good product now. He said he thinks it's a better product than it than it was uh, when when Scott Demore. I'm I'm pretty sure that's right. I don't want to quote him, uh, but um, he alluded to the fact that it is a good product now. Let's just say he said it's a good product now. Not that it wasn't a good product before, but he said it's it's. You know, he said it's a very good product now, and uh, I decided, you know what? Maybe I'll give it a maybe I'll give it another chance. Maybe I'll give it another chance. Um, maybe I'll jump back on the, the TNA uh, wagon. And uh, then I got this, this this ad came in on Facebook. I saw join TNA plus forty dollars until you know you sign up now for forty dollars discounted price. Uh, you you get TNA plus plus bound for glory. Uh, and all the and access to everything that's on TNA Plus until January seventeenth for forty bucks, forty dollars Canadian. I think it was thirty four ninety five US, forty dollars Canadian. I thought that was a good deal, so I signed up yesterday and I watched Bound for Glory, first TNA, first full TNA um, show a program that I watched in a very very long time. And man, oh man, what have I missed? <laughs> what have I missed? This was an excellent excellent show i'm watching it i'm like why did i stop watching why did i you know as like i love i love what i'm doing for ncg love what i'm doing for nobles champion group not gonna stop doing that uh but there was a lot of things going on so it just wasn't fitting into my schedule but uh, it's gonna fit into my schedule now it's gonna fit back into my schedule because i absolutely loved Balva glory uh it was um just an excellent 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 show I, I enjoyed it. Now, there were some things better than others. Not everything was perfect. Not everything was great. But overall, I thought it was an excellent show. And um, we're going to talk about Bound for Glory. I'm going to give you my my uh, my review uh, my 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 review of Bound for Glory. So we'll talk a little bit about Bound for Glory. You know, it's good to be back. It's good to be back behind this mic and talking and seeing the the shooting up north uh, logo. Usually, you would see a picture of. Um, uh, I have moose, so you can't see it now, but I, I rearranged a few things. But I, I figured maybe I just put the shooting up north background behind me now. And um, that way I could just angle the computer any way I want to, right? So I think it looks pretty good. I think it looks good behind me anyway. Uh, but yeah, so let's TNA. Let's go to TNA. Man, first of all, that place was packed. That place, there had to be about 3,000 people there. And I was like, holy smoke. They are, they are doing something right. They are doing something right. There was 3,000 people there. And and the opening match, the, the official opening match at the pre-show. Um, well, we're not going to talk about the pre-show. We'll talk about the Gazaria thing a little bit. 
Uh, but I know Ash and Heather White Elegance, they, they won their tag team match. Uh, but uh, let's opening the opening match for the, the main show, Bound for Glory. You couldn't have asked for a better opening match to set the stage. It almost it almost raised the bar way too high. And and we it actually did raise the bar way too high. Uh, because the match that followed it, you know, people were all were all tuckered out from screaming and yelling. So uh but we'll talk about both those matches in succession right now. So Mike Bailey, Spiritable Mike Bailey, defending the X Division Championship against El Hio El Vikingo. Hope I got that right. But uh my goodness. My goodness, what an incredible freaking match this was. What an incredible match this was. It was just spectacular. You know, we all know Vikingo is is a terrific, he's a, a unique, special, special talent, special athlete. He could do things that you know people could only dream about doing. Speedball Mike Bailey, one of the absolute best, who also could do things that people just dream about doing. That you know they 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 might have like little action figures and they pull off these moves with these action figures. But but Mike Bailey and Vikingo, they could actually do it in real life, right? <laughs> they could do it in real life. And just man, just what a spectacular match! Just back and forth, such a you know a just just a breathtaking, a breathtaking match, man. Holy smoke! I just. Words can't describe how great this was. I this is a match that I would want to watch over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. It was just a special match, perfect match to to kick off um, Bound for Glory, as I mentioned. The one move that just freaking was just I couldn't believe is Vikingo was up on the on the turn on the uh, the the ring post. He's up on the ring post. And he's balancing on the ring post. And I'm like, how the hell is he balancing on the ring post? I would have fell off and broken my neck. But he's balancing on the ring post. And then he leaps and he hits a Canadian destroyer. It's a Canadian destroyer on Mike Bailey on the ring apron. I'm like, my goodness. I'm I'm chanting in my I'm chanting fight forever. Right? Just my goodness. And of course, you have to be a special. Yeah, you, you can't just perform that move on anybody. You know, Mike Bailey knew exactly what to do, and he was able to maneuver. So it, would, it would, yeah, props to both of them for pulling that off. Uh, but special, special match, X Division Championship. Mike Bailey wins the match. Um, I wish they were still wrestling right now. I wish the match never ended, uh, but uh, it did have to end eventually. But Mike Bailey wins that match. But just you know, the great, great. The crowd was so pumped. The crowd was into this. The crowd was just, just. Fight forever. This is awesome. And I'm thinking, wow, the crowd reaction is just fantastic. Again, it had to be about 3,000 people there. You know, it was a sold out crowd and they were just pumped, jacked up for this match. And I'm thinking, man, I feel bad for the match that has to follow this, right? And um, the match that followed it actually, you know, I, I, the fans were all, uh, were all tired out for screaming and yelling. For Bailey and Vikingo, um, so Jody Threat and Danny Luna, the Spitfire, defending the TNA Women Tag Team Titles against Rosemary and NXT's Wendy Chu. Uh, that match followed. That was a good match. It wasn't a great match. It was okay, but uh, they had to follow Bailey and Vikingo. They had the unfortunate task of following Bailey and Vikingo, and the crowd was basically silent for this one. You know, got to give credit to Jody Threat. She's trying her best to get the crowd into it with the screams and the and the and the yells, trying to get the crowd pumped up, but it just wasn't working. I think people just might have lost their voice, or they were they were resting their voice from the previous match. Uh, but they had decent, good back and forth action. Just the crowd just wasn't it. The only part the crowd was into is when uh, Wendy Chu took out the pillow, and then the crowd started chanting, "We want pillows, we want pillows," and and there was that one point where. Where Wendy Chu actually picked the pillow up, the pillow was thrown out to the outside. She picked the pillow up, and the crowd just popped for the pillow. But uh, that was it. Other than that, they there was really the crowd was didn't seem to uh, the crowd didn't seem to be into into this one. They were relatively quiet. Uh, but uh, Rosemary turns on Chu. Chu, um, she's the one that takes the uh, the loss for the team. Uh, Jody Threat, Danny Luna, they retain. 
Uh, but to Rosemary Spears Wendy Chu, I guess, setting up a feud between the two. Unless Chu is just going back to NXT and you're not going to see her again. Uh, maybe Rosemary shows up at NXT. Who knows? But uh, Rosemary attacks Chu and um, threat Luna walk out, <clears throat> steal the champion. Now, I, I do want to say I'm not familiar with the storylines. So if I mess up a storyline, if there's more to the storyline between Rosemary and Wendy Chu, I apologize. I haven't been. This is the first. Um, to me. This is the first. I had something, something on my lip. I don't know what it was. I, anyway, uh, just wanted to get. It was bugging the hell out of me. Um, it's probably a piece of a chicken nugget, <laughs> or a fish stick sandwich. Uh, but um, what was I saying? Oh yeah. So um, if there's something, if there's a storyline, and I'm missing something, I apologize. It's the first TNA show that I've seen in a long time, so I'm not 100 percent familiar with the storylines. But uh, but I will get familiar with them because I'm going to be watching TNA from that one. I, I got TNA Plus. I can watch TNA anytime I want. Um, and I'll probably I, – I love Bound for Glory, and I'll probably just renew it on January 17th. Uh, but uh, if I do – if if I'm not connecting storylines, I apologize. But, but anyway, it's Rosemary Spears, Wendy Chu, and um, probably setting up a feud between the two, unless there's this – Part of the storyline that I don't know about, but uh, my, my guess is it's setting up a feud. Um, it's an educated guess that this is setting up a feud between between the two. The next match, the next match, Josh Alexander against Steve Mackman. When I stopped watching TNA, Josh Alexander is the walking weapon. I start watching TNA again, and suddenly he's the, he's the, he's the walking wiener. And I looked that up. That was started by Joe Hendry. Um, I'm sure you all know that, but Joe Hendry called him the walking wiener, and I guess that kind of stuck. Uh, so now he's, he's no longer the walking weapon. He's the walking wiener. Josh Alexander, I thought that was uh, I thought that was quite humorous uh, that um, Josh Alexander has gone from the walking weapon to the walking the walking wiener, uh, but but yeah, but Josh Alexander, Steve Macklin, um, another. This was you know when 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 you, what you got to do is say Josh Alexander, Steve Macklin are wrestling each other, and then you're like, oh, that's gonna be spectacular. It's gonna be fantastic, and that's what it was. Which is an absolutely absolute war. That was a knockout drag out fight between the two. <clears throat> Um, absolutely love this one. Absolutely love this match. Uh, Josh Alexander zip tying Steve Macklin's hands behind his back, and the ref wanted to clip the the zip ties off, but Macklin wasn't having any of it. Macklin was like, "Leave them on. I'm going to fight with them on," and he was doing okay with them. I think uh, maybe Macklin wanted to uh, Macklin wanted to beat Alexander with his hands behind his back. I know Roddy Piper did that one time a long time ago, but that was against a a um. And enhancement talent. I think it was AJ Petruzzi. I think it was. And uh, Piper put his arms behind his back, and um, and uh, he beat AJ Petruzzi with uh, with one arm behind his back. That's going back like to 84, 84, 85, I believe. Uh, but anyway, back to Alexander Macklin. This was this was just another fantastic great great fight great war between the two um love macklin fighting his heart out with his hands behind his back does a dive to the outside got a little scared because it looked like he landed face first onto the uh, floor but he, he appeared he appeared to be okay i think josh alexander caught him and was able to break his fall somewhat uh but uh, love the back and forth action between the two josh alexander as a heel uh, you know i i it's it's hard for me to to um to boo Josh Alexander because I've been following him for such a long time, such a big fan of Josh Alexander. It's hard for me to boo him, but uh, he's he's got the fans booing him now. He's got the fans chanting "Walking Wiener." They they turned on him. So whatever he's done, he's done a good job, and he's got the fans uh, turning on him. So he's he's obviously doing a good job as a heel. I think he's part of the faction now, as well. Um, I can't remember. There were two uh, two young guys. Uh, like I said, I'm not watching. Uh, I, I have to catch up. But um, uh, Sinner and Saint, Sinner and Saint. Uh, I don't know their their full names. Um, Judas. I I am not even going to Judas something. But uh, Sinner and Saint. But they they formed a uh, a faction, uh, as you know. But I'm I'm lear I'm I'm learning again. I'm learning again. Uh, and uh, but great great match. Steve Macklin passes out from the ankle lock. Uh, his arms behind his back, uh, reminiscent of Stone Cold Steve Austin passing out from Bret Hart's um, <clears throat> sharpshooter at WrestleMania 13, was it? 13, I believe. So uh, that's what that reminded me of. 
but a great, great match between the two. Um, they, they, they accomplished what they, they stay, what they want to accomplish. They, they achieved. And I thought overall, it was a great match between Josh Alexander and Steve Macklin. Now, Josh Alexander, I believe his contract might be coming up soon. Uh, I heard rumors that he's leaving. Um, I don't know. Maybe somebody wants to comment here and let me know if, if those rumors might be true or not, if Josh Alexander might actually be leaving or if it's rumored that he'll be, he'll be, um, he'll be testing the market. I wouldn't be surprised if he tested the market. Cause I think last year he wanted to test the market, but they exercised an option on Josh Alexander. That'll be a, a huge, huge talent to lose if, if they lost Josh Alexander. But, um, I, I don't want to speak on it cause I don't know the whole, I don't know the story yet, but I just what her, was hearing, was hearing things. I was hearing things. So, um, We'll see. We'll we'll cross that bridge when we when we get to it. Uh, and then after that, we had we had PCO versus Matt Cardona in a monsters ball match. First of all, I love Matt Cardona's death match Buster's attire. I thought that was that was hilarious, reminiscent of uh, Ghostbusters, but he's wearing the uh, death match Buster's attire, and um, Matt Cardona. Special, special talent. King of the Indies. King of the Deathmatch. Or self-proclaimed the King of the Deathmatch. Um, PCO, you know. <clears throat> I, 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 you know, when I stopped watching TNA some time ago, every time I would see PCO, he's he'd always taking these risks, taking these crazy bumps, taking these insane bumps, and I would always cringe, like, oh my god, this guy's gonna kill himself. He's, I uh, think it was like, I'm thinking like he's 53, 54 years old, what, come on. And I'm watching now, and he's 56, he's almost 60, and he's taking even crazier bumps now. I'm like, and I'm cringing, I'm like, oh my god, he's gonna be 60 years old soon. Like, what, when is he gonna stop? Right, he's gonna wind up killing himself. You know, I can't. It's it's hard to watch. I, I'm I'm not I'm not a humongous PCO fan. <clears throat> just the bumps he was taking in this match were were just just more than insane, man. I mean, come on. I mean, Cordona taking thumbtacks and shoving them into his mouth and then pushing them into his head. And and like the the other the insane bumps he was taking, I think to the outside and inside the ring. I can't remember them what exact, but they were just you saw they were insane, insane bumps. And and like I said, he's fifty six. He's gonna be sixty. Like when when is it time to slow down? <laughs> I mean, come on. I know the fans love to see it. I know it pops the fans. I know the fans think he's invincible, but he's not invincible. He's not a Frankenstein. You know, he's not impervious to pain. And he's he's gotta, you know, I he's gotta slow down on the crazy but, but you know, that's up to PCO, of course. But my opinion is one day he's gonna severely hurt himself, man severely hurt himself i mean i know you i know you got a job to do and you want to and he looks like he gained weight as well he did he's not he looked like he put on he's got a little bit of a looks like uh <laughs> looks like frankenstein's been eating a couple of fish sticks now <laughs> looks like frankenstein has been been um indulging in the fish stick sandwiches um a little bit too much later <laughs> too much lately <laughs> Uh, I got um, who makes it? Yeah, Morton's. Morton's fish is it Morton's or is it Gordon's? I don't know. But the this, the the fishing industry is is kind of happy right now. The the, 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 <laughs> the fish stick in industry is is thriving right now because 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 PCO PCO is uh eating uh his good share of fish stick sandwiches. But um yeah but um this one was crazy. This one was crazy. It, it was it was okay. Like I say, I'm I'm cringing. I'm like I'm like oh I'm like oh my god oh god like what I'm like like enough's enough, man. But uh, PCO does win the match. Uh, he retains both titles. Uh, it was the digital media title, and he holds another title. The name of the title escapes me. Uh, but um, it was a crazy match. PCO wins. And uh, but I I I love Matt Cardona. I love. I'm glad to see he was on the show. Um, Cardona is uh. Great talents, but uh, PCO, man, come on. Two things. Slow down on the fish stick sandwiches. 
<laughs> Slow down to the fish stick sandwiches, BCL. And uh, please, please, just, just take it easy. Take it easy. I mean, it just maybe, um, maybe just like an arm bar or just a, get an arm, get like a. Just get like a little uh, arm drag takedown and and uh, hold it for like ten minutes. Uh, just maybe do one of those. All right, all right. And the next match, maybe my favorite match of the night. Maybe my favorite match of the night. Moose against Mike Santana. Man, Moose is a main event superstar. Mike Santana is a main event superstar. Now, when you put these two guys, when you put that that equation together, you're gonna get. An absolutely freaking phenomenal, freaking phenomenal match, and that's what we got. Absolutely incredible. Moose and Mike Santana just absolutely went to war on each other. Um, Moose, Moose actually praised Mike Santana, saying that uh, Mike Santana reminds himself when he was younger. Uh, but both are just. I'm going to call them mega stars. Both are mega stars. Uh, Mike Santana became a mega star, I think, in this match against Moose. Mike Santana is, without a doubt, a future TNA world champion. AEW dropped the ball big time with Mike Santana, but their loss to TNA's gain because Mike gain because Mike Santana is absolutely fantastic. Uh, of course, he was at LAX. He came in uh, years ago to Impact. Now he's a single superstar, and uh, he's a future TNA world champion. And what can you say about Moose? Moose is a megastar, one of the best in the world. One of the absolute best in the world. And um, just these two just absolutely had an absolute amazing war with each other. Lots of near falls in this one. Lots of great back and forth action. The fans were into, into this one. I'm on my feet watching this. I can't believe what I'm watching. And um, I thought Moose was going to pull it out on occasions. But 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 Mike Santana was the winner. Uh, I think that might have been the right call. You know, Moose doesn't need... Moose didn't need the win here. I think Mike Santana needed the win more than Moose needed the win. I think Mike Santana going over Moose, you know, boosts him up the singles chart, uh, makes him more of a singles threat, um, makes him more and it make, uh, makes him a more attractive um, potential opponent for Nick Nemeth and the TNA World Championship down the road. Nemeth against Mike Santana, if they if those two go at it, my goodness, holy smoke, that's going to be an absolute. Just a fantastic match. But uh, this one was great. Love that Mike Santana went over. I could watch these two go at it. Uh, I hope there's a rematch, a more rematch. I would love to see these guys go at it every single day. Moose and Mike Santana. If I could just watch one match for the rest of my life every single day, it would be Moose versus Mike Santana. Maybe not. Maybe not. But uh, <laughs> I was thinking, oh, we better, better pump the brakes on that one there. But uh, but yeah, absolutely, I absolutely love this match, and and I'm thinking whoever follows this match, you know, they have a tough task ahead of them. But uh, they did a much better job than Jody Threat and Danny Lunar against Rosemary Wendy Chu, uh, Jordan Grace and Masha Slamov Slamovich, the TNA Knockouts World Title. Uh, Slamovich <clears throat> never never um, defeated uh, Grace before. Um, Jordan Grace. Holding the title had numerous NXT appearances. Obviously, going to WWE when her contract is up. That's that's another rumor there that Jordan Grace uh, will be leaving. Again, I can't confirm anything. I'm just going by you know rumors. Uh, so it's rumored that she's leaving. I I mean, if she has an opportunity to go to the WWE, I mean, she should 100% take it. Especially with the working relationship between the two, she can still show up on TNA. Uh, especially if she wins the NXT Women's Championship, then she can come back to TNA and defend it. Um, but uh, yeah, this uh, uh, following Moose versus Mike Santana was a tough task for for anybody. But but Jordan Grace and Masha Slamovich absolutely pulled it off. Another spectacular match. Absolutely love this one as well. The whole show was freaking phenomenal. <clears throat> the whole show was excellent. Uh, with the exception of the Jody Threat match. Uh, but this was spectacular. Such a suspenseful, great back and forth action in this one. The super near falls. There was there were times where I thought Jordan Grace was gonna pull it out. Just like in the previous match, Moose and Santana. Uh, thought it was Jordan Grace was gonna pull it out. Uh, then you think Slamovich is gonna pull it out. 
and they get the shoulders up, near falls, super near falls, mega near falls, and they're just going at it, you know, tooth and nail, back and forth until finally Masha Slavovich, uh, she wins the match, uh, becomes the new NXT, the new NXT. She becomes the new TNA uh, Knockouts World Champion. Uh, first time ever, well-deserved for Masha Slavovich. She's an absolutely fantastic talent. Deserves holding the Knockouts World title for the first time. And uh, Jordan Grace, good luck in NXT. Good luck in NXT. Um, sure, Triple H was like, okay, it's done. She lost the title. Let's get that contract written up. And let's get Jordan Grace in NXT, damn it. <laughs> that's, that's Vince McMahon. Sorry, Vince McMahon's not there anymore. But uh, Triple H, um, I'm sure he's got that contract here. They're typing that contract right up right now for Jordan Grace. And... Um, I'm sure she's gonna. Uh, if if they if they if they give her an offer, I am sure that she will. Uh, she will take it. And we had two matches left. We had two matches left. Uh, had the TNA. Now there was a TNA World Title, Nick Nemeth against Joe Hendry. Then you had the uh, the tag team titles match. Uh, I was wondering why. The world title match wasn't the last one, but we figured out why because you know, Jeff Hardy decided he's got to put his his designs all over the uh, all over the ring, and they're going to be making a mess. So, might as well just have that match last. So, the, the next match was was a TNA, the TNA World Title, Nick Nemeth against Joe Hendry. This match was okay. You know, people don't get upset with me here. Okay, don't get mad with me here, but I'm not the biggest Joe Hendry fan. I don't, I don't know. I'm not the biggest fan of Joe Hendry. I, I don't, he's got the he's got the catchy tune. He's got the catchy tune, which 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 has put him over. Uh, I believe in Joe Hendry. I believe in Joe Hendry. You know that's a catchy tune, and it, it's got him over. But other than that, you know, I don't really see too much anything really special about him. It's it's just me. It's just me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just, you know, it, it was a good match. It was a, it was a good match. I'll even say it an excellent main event. I just, maybe um, I need to watch more Joe Hendry, that's all. But I just, from what I've seen in the past, I think he's bigger, a lot bigger now than he was when I stopped watching. Uh, so maybe I'm thinking about when I stopped watching compared to now. But um, I thought it was a very, very good main event. Like I said, I'll even call it an excellent main event. Um we saw John Layfield came out, took out Frank. Oh, first of all, first of all, let's, let's, let's talk about this. Let's go back to the, the, the pre-show. Frankie Kazarian wins the Call Your Gauntlet uh, Battle Royal. So he wins the Call Your Gauntlet Battle Royal. He gets actually a nice trophy this time. I think um, years ago, I forgot who it was, won a tournament. And uh, Scott DeMore gave him like a little tiny trophy, like like this big. He goes, here, here you go. Here's a trophy. <laughs> like, yeah, thanks. I got my little trophy. But uh, this was like a, a decent trophy. And um, so he's able to call his shot for any title that he wants at any time for, I think it's for about a year. And uh, and he's the and he's the special referee. Frankie Gazarian wins that. And he's a special referee uh, for this match. So immediately I was like, oh, God, they're doing this thing. You know, he wins the call your shot gauntlet. He's going to be the referee. Uh, whoever wins that match between Nemeth and Hendry uh, is going to be all tired out. And then Frankie Kazarian is going to cash in, and Frankie Kazarian is going to be uh, the new TNA World Champion. So I was like, all right, so they're going to put the belt on on Frankie Kazarian. So that's what I'm there. I'm like, oh, that's, they're going to do that. And I was like, oh, it's like, oh. That's been done before. Boost did it to, to Josh Alexander a few years ago. I was like, oh, but if that's the way they're gonna go, that's the way they're gonna go. I have no control over it. I'll just watch. <laughs> I'll just I'll just make another fish stick sandwich and just just watch. And um, so Nemeth and, and Joe Hendry, uh, as I said, um, excellent um, excellent main event. Um, <clears throat> Layfield comes out. John Layfield comes out. Uh, takes out Frankie Kazarian, Joe Hendry, and then Ryan Nemeth. Uh, I, I know Kazarian wanted to cash in. Kazarian was going to cash in once. And I, I think the one time, oh yeah, he was going to cash in once. And then Joe Hendry said, no, you're not going to cash in. You're not cashing in now. You've got to come and get in the ring and be the referee, do your job. Uh, and so that's that um, squash, that uh, cash in. Uh, then Layfield shows up. He takes out Kazarian. Takes out Hendry. Takes out uh, Joe. Ne um, 
Brian Nemeth as well. <clears throat> and then he leaves. I guess you'll get you gotta get the John Leafield pop in there somehow. Uh, but John Leafield showing up everywhere. I was like MLW John Leafield showing up. I was like GC GCW John Leafield showing up. I, I was at McDonald's yesterday and and uh, order, ordering a Big Mac and uh, jo John Leafield uh, showed up and and closed line a few people out. So he's showing up everywhere. He's showing up everywhere. I'm not like um, <laughs> I, I was at the. Uh, I, I was at a trail. I was at a, a trail walk yesterday, and and um, I came across these um, these beautiful white-tailed deer. And and John Layfield Bradshaw shows up, and he clotheslines both of them. And so he's showing up. He's showing up everywhere. John Bradshaw Layfield. I <laughs> some plane flying across the sky. <laughs> the plane flying across the sky. John Layfield shot himself out of a cannon and he flew towards the plane and he clotheslined the plane right out of the sky. So he's so he's showing up everywhere and just clotheslining everybody. Yeah, you know, he doesn't give he doesn't give a damn. He's showing up he's at the grocery stores, at Walmart, wherever wherever someone needs a clothesline is, John Bright John Layfield's gonna be there with his with his trench coat and, and cowboy hat and and his sneer, his his angry sneer. Here comes the here, here comes angry sneering clothesline at John John Layfield. So he took out uh, Kazarian Hendry and Ryan Nemeth <clears throat> and um Nick Nemeth eventually wins the match. Uh Kazarian Kazarian was was gonna tease. He kept teasing that he's gonna cash in, but he didn't actually cash in, which which was good. I mean I, I knew I I glad I was wrong. I'm glad I was wrong. I think that's what they were setting up that people were gonna think, oh, he's gonna cash in, he's gonna win the title, like I was thinking. But he didn't actually cash it in. Uh he he tried to, but he didn't get to cash in, so he, he held on to it. Nick Nemeth wins the match. Nick Nemeth holds on to the title. A lot of people are upset though. A lot of people are saying this was Joe Hendry's time. Joe Hendry should have uh, won the match. But I'm I'm thinking Joe Hendry's got interest from the WWE as well. So we don't know when Joe Hendry's uh, contract is up. I don't know if that's public knowledge, but um I think they're interested in Joe Hendry as well. So we could be seeing Joe Hendry, Jordan Grace, and Josh Alexander all leaving for the WWE. You know, you know, you know, you don't know. But but not before John Bradshaw, not before John Layfield shows up with close lines, uh, close lines all three of them first. So I'm on, I'm on line. I'm gonna looking for some fresh fish sticks. And uh, I open up the door and John Layfield's John Layfield is behind the fish sticks, and I go to reach. He pulls me. He pulls me in, and he clotheslines <laughs> me with the clothesline. Well, he's uh, he's all over the place, John John Layfield. All right, and we had one more match. We had one more match. It was for the TNA World Tag Team Titles. The champions Brian Myers and Eddie Edwards against Chris Bay and Ace Austin, ABC, and the Hardy Boys, Jeff and Matt Hardy, both pushing fifty. Both push the Not that there's anything wrong with that, but uh, they're not the same Hardys as they as they once were. They they've lost a step. Matt Hardy is a little bit slower. Uh, Jeff Hardy still taking them um, those insane risks off the top rope. He's not as graceful as he once was. Uh, there was full metal mayhem. Um, this match was okay. It wasn't the best match of the show. Um, they tried their best. They tried their best. Um, they had a lot of crazy ladders. A lot of cr the. Jeff um Jeff Hardy inspired ring apron um was a little strange uh but um inspired tables also but hey you know Jeff Hardy you can do what he wants right he's 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 the biggest name they have or one of the biggest names so let him league do what he wants if he wants to paint on the ring apron let him let him paint let him paint let him let him uh, paint it I wonder if <laughs> I wonder if um if if he painted uh, in between matches like he painted real fast or if they just put another ring apron on there. But um, hey, Jeff Hardy, you want to paint? You know, paint away, brother. Paint away, <laughs> paint away, brother. But uh, yeah, but um, it, it was a good match. They they did their best. Um, Chris Bay, Ace Austin, obviously, in my opinion, were the two most the best tag team in this match. <clears throat> and uh, but you know, you kind of sense that you know it's the Hardys. You know, it's. They're on their way out. I think I think Matt Hardy said that they're going to have a. They might even be on a retirement tour, or, or a retirement tour is coming up. Uh, so um, you want to um, pay tribute to the Hardys. So the Hardys win. They're the new TNA um, World Tag Team Champions. Um, Matt Hardy is fifty. Jeff Hardy is forty-seven. By the way, um, 
but uh, they are legends <clears throat> and they will be uh, i think they i did like i said i think they were going to be on their retirement tour soon so it made sense putting the titles on them um would give them some good publicity as well you know jeff and matt hardy now they were with aew i guess the contracts ran out and they just went to tna i don't know the whole story there i think there was some issue with jeff hardy uh in aew uh but uh once again aew's loss is tna's gain right uh, but the Hardys, hey, nothing wrong with it. Um, I'm a Hardys fan. Um, Matt and Jeff Hardy been following them for since the beginning, since they were with uh, Doc Hendricks in the WWE when they first started out. Uh, and um, Hardy Boys, yeah, like I said, they had some some the best spot in this one was um, Chris Bay. Um, he, he was swinging and he gets speared. The swinging spear. Brian Myers hit a swinging spear onto Chris Bay uh, from the ladder. So that was uh, that was the best spot, in my opinion, of the show. Jeff Hardy doing a swanton from the from the uh, the tall ladder again. Not as graceful as he used to be. It's almost like he's just flopping. You know, he, he used to be very graceful, uh, but I, I think I think when you get hit with that now, I think you get hurt a lot more than you would have been about 10 years ago because he's not as graceful as he once was, as I, as I mentioned. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, congratulations, Hardy Boys. They are the TNA World Tag Team Champions. So that was Bound for Glory. I thought it was very good. I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I really did. And uh, I'm glad I I'm glad I watched it. I'm glad I'm back here, and I'm looking forward to uh, to TNA on Thursday night. I got TNA Plus. I can watch it now. I have until January 17th. Probably gonna renew it after that. I I enjoyed it immensely, and um, I think I'm gonna be doing this again. I think I'll be back uh, very soon. I know I said that fast, and then I disappear. But uh, I I kind of enjoyed this, and. Um, I hope people are watching. I hope uh, hope I uh, got a few people coming back to watch me. Uh, so on that note, I'm going to say thank you very much for watching. If you are watching, uh, I'm Lewis Carlin. This is Shooting Up North. And until next time, thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye. And stay safe, everyone. So long. Bye-bye.